thanks, thanks everybody for coming today. And um, it's great to see so many people in the room because about three years, yeah, what's it, 15 no, in 2012, we had a, a jam media retrospective. And it was uh, Morris kind of invited us down. And we were in a beautiful building around the corner there in the, the nunnery. And amazing, the, the Harry Clark, how Harry Clark stained glass windows are amazing. Like, just a wonderful setting, like, you know. And uh, so it was m myself, John, and, and, and Mark, the three principals in Jam Media. And uh, two people turned up. So there's three of us chatting to two people. So I'm delighted to have seven people today. <laughs> anyway, okay, so this is, this is, uh, this is Roy. I don't know whether you, you might be familiar with him, you may not, but uh, it's, it started its life as this character here, um, uh, Badly Drawn Roy, which was a short film that uh, we made in 2006. And it was about this <coughs> kind of dysfunctional, um, badly drawn animated character who couldn't uh, get a job in the real world, and as a result, he kind of he, he sank into depression and alcoholism. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> as you do, do you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so uh, I'm gonna. This is where it started, and, and I'm gonna bring you to the the evolution of an idea. Or the devolution of an idea <laughs> um, uh, over over the course of time because you know he's getting younger and that's why I call it a really clever title. Curious case of Brian. I don't even get it, <laughs> but I, I did toy with a few. I did toy with a few titles and uh, this is the one here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know it is really that's what it's about really, isn't it? But, uh, <laughs> It is kind of like, you know, the one idea and you kind of milked to death. But in a good way. So, so I'll start, I'll, I'll go from the beginning. Now, as I say, this, this, is the, this is the chap who started it all. Uh, I think he was, uh, I think he was in his early 30s in, in, the, in the film. And basically he's still living with his folks and he couldn't get a job because he's badly drawn. And he couldn't... Uh, he couldn't get a job. Uh, people were discriminating against him in the real world. He lived in the real world, so it was like a mockumentary. And um, just to give you a taste of what that was about, in case you haven't seen Actually, sorry, no. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I suppose... Oh, wait, why do I have that there? I'll tell you what, uh, because that's me having the idea there. See? See? <laughs> that's me having the idea, right? <laughs> And um, <laughs> you love that hair there, it's great. Isn't it? <laughs> and, and that's John Royce there with his little dungarees on. <laughs> and he actually said to me, he said to me, if, if enough people ask him, he's going to buy a pair of dungarees and wear them tomorrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Noel, uh, who's, who's down there. He's, he's uh, the, the visual effects director on Roy. And he's, you know, so we're all together in college. So, so the reason I show you that is that because. It actually did occur to me in college that I had this notion, just a vague little notion in my head about uh, a, a badly drawn animated character standing on a doll queue. I was kind of going, it's kind of a good idea. Like it's, it's kind of goofy. Like, you know, it's a bit mad, isn't it? And I, and I kind of went, eh, maybe there's something in that. And I, I kind of came back to I, I, I sketched it down in, in a you know, little, little uh, notebook that I had. And I kind of, you know, we put it aside and didn't think about it for a long time. Um, but then, I suppose it was. I, I, I kept kept jumping into my head. I must do something about that. If I ever get a chance, I'll do something about that. You know. So I did uh, get a chance in two thousand and six, as I said, with the through the framework scheme, which is which is a fantastic scheme, and, and uh, Jason touched on it earlier, um, and uh, and I think uh, Connor touched on it earlier as well. It, it it's an amazing opportunity for animators. <coughs> Whether they're experienced or not, or whether they just have a, a good idea and a story to tell, there's an opportunity to get some money from the Irish Film Board, RTE, and I think the Arts Council are still involved in it, I'm not sure what at the time they were. And it's a, it's a wonderful resource. And so if you're a student at the minute, I, I would urge you, if you have an idea in your head, get it out there and just uh, scribble it down. And you may not do something about it, but if you do, at a later point, 
Um, you know, I think college years are probably your most <laughs> it's terrible to say, but probably your most creative and inventive time of your life, you know. So if you have ideas, jot them down. And at some point in your life you might actually take them up or you may you may do it immediately, but like it, it really is good to keep notes of these little ideas that come along because I've been milking this idea for years now. <laughs> <laughs> it's working and treat, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's us anyway. There's there's me having the idea there as well. <laughs> there's, there's John and there's Noel Hans <laughs> We were all uh, intoxicated obviously at this point. And that's uh, Richie Brain and the big smile on his face because they're winning the Oscar for the Avatar recently. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, I'll just give you a little flavour of what what the original film was about, and so I'll give you a little clip now. Are you happy with your outward appearance, or are there some things you'd like to change about yourself? Well, I don't think anybody really likes looking at themselves in the mirror, but I mean, what is the story with this? Like, that's twice the size of that. And I'm, I wouldn't say I'm 100% happy with the shape of my head. And then, I suppose, there's my eyes, like, I'd like them to be the same size. But, I mean, you could go on and on, but I read somewhere that even Brad Pitt hates his feet. So it's a kind of mockumentary format, um, and there was a, a, like it was it was really kind of a guerrilla shoot. We kind of we got all our friends and family. My, my family actually feature quite heavily in it. That's my brother playing uh, playing Roy there, and we drew over him. And I um, I wrote the script with my brother, and then my mum and dad were in it. And uh, here's a scene with my dad, my late father actually. So here's a scene. You sitting around the house. I'm not day. sitting around. I was down in the job centre today. Yeah. You see me going out. Yeah. Yeah, well, right. what's your problem today? What have you done twice or three times a day? The jobs don't come up every hour. No, it just, it might happen to come up. So you don't, they're all shite jobs down there. So what? It's a start, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm sick doing shite jobs. Oh, you're sick doing shite jobs, yeah. So you'd rather stay here and do nothing. Well, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? I'm retired, right? That's well for you. I know it's well for me, yes, but I don't really like to work, right? You, it's about time either that or get out, right? Right. <laughs> so that was a, a, bit of a, a bit of an argument there with his dad. That's where it kind of went steadily downhill from there. Uh, and this is still oh, awesome. he showing off his skills as an animated character. You see me? No. You see me? No. You see me now? No. One more. I'll do one more up you. See, do you know who uh, made this one famous? <laughs> so that was it. Uh, that's the short film. <laughs> In essence, actually, we. we... <laughs> Uh, the framework scheme is fantastic, as I said, but it, they, we kind of had, um, we had an idea of doing about seven or eight minutes of a film, you know, but it ended up a 22 minute epic, and which cost an awful lot to produce, and we got X amount from frameworks, but Jam, Jam kind of subsidied the rest of it, and we had to kind of, did a lot of long hours, a lot of very talented people in this room who kind of made it happen, but, uh, um, and then, so, after that, it was kind of a fortuitous kind of thing that um, a, an executive in CBBC just happened upon it, kind of totally randomly, just saw it in a festival or something. That did quite well in the festival circuit, did it, won a couple of awards. Probably would have won more of awards if it wasn't 23 minutes long. It was like, <laughs> it was way too long. But anyway, um, <coughs> hindsight is a great thing. But anyway, uh, yeah, so this, this executive, Jess Celebrity, Spotted it and said, "Wow, well, that, that that could really work." You know, themes of like yeah, you know, fish out of water, um, the celebration of, of of being different, um, and just 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 the whole notion of trying to trying to fit in, were themes that you know are quite universal and they work for kids as well. So all we had to do was take out the alcoholism <laughs> and the depression <laughs> and the cursing. So that's what we did, and we did we we felt so, so here's he, he's an eleven year old, so he went from a thirty year old to eleven. 
And so, but it, it, it's, it's strange in that like, there's so many similarities. We kept the mockumentary format, um, and we just made them a little bit cuter, gave them blue eyes, and slightly better drawn, you know, slightly more cleaned up. Um, but, so I'll give you a little flavour of, oh, yes, and this is it. So what we did was, we spent about two years, actually. No, no, two years. One year. One year developing the Bible. And I know Jason touched on it earlier about show Bibles and how they work. But this is kind of the Bible here. Um, it, 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 it sets out the rules of the world. It sets out the main characters, the family dynamics, and um, the, how, how the friends how the friends kind of interact and, and school life as well. And this is kind of like a, almost like a mood board of what we wanted to get into the show. And then he approached the writing. And then this is very important, the, the rules of Shelley, because like, with an animated character in the real world, it's fantastic and all, it's great, brilliant concept. But if he had, um, if he had the ability, say, to squeeze through a keyhole at will, um, it would it would offer up too many opportunities for him just to to, to get out of situations that are, yeah it makes it too easy it makes it too kind of uh, it, it it makes there's no jeopardy because he can do anything you know so we made we had rules that allow him like you, you can't defy gravity and you know um, this is actually the next one actually sorry uh, there was one where he was pull it like, um, there's the picture of us kind of, as an external force, we can, he, he can stretch much further than he can willingly himself. So we kind of, we, we, as part of the Bible, we made this whole set of rules of the universe on how, what, what Roy can and can't do. And uh, that kind of, that fed into the jeopardy in the scripts. Like, you know, otherwise he could just get out of jail too easily. So just to give you a, a, a flavor of the show. Hey, I've got it, I've got the golden the ticket. Mean. You are the toy, you are an action figure. Confused. Oh, I think that's too big to be a spaceship. And uh, devious. Oh, my precious. Scared. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Great. I think you're ready. Brilliant. That's great. Thanks for that, son. Listen, one small thing, I probably should have mentioned it earlier, but uh, I don't know my lines. All right, there you go. It's a load off my mind. You what? Why didn't you say something? Well, I just did. Earlier. I forgot. You forgot? Right, leave it with me. I'll think of something. You forgot. I've got an idea. I'll meet you at the school at 1900 hours. Brilliant. See you at 9. 7 p.m. Mm, yep, 7, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, 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 yeah, we tried to... We kept it very similar to the original short, in, 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 and we, we were very conscious about keeping it quite Dublin and real. And you know, the, the more real the world, the, the better it worked, I think, because it's such a, such a, you know, it's never going to happen. Anime characters not really exist in the real world. So, so but I kind of made it that, that <laughs> or do they, like, or do they? Like. <laughs> um, but uh, so it, it, it did kind of, you know, we, we wanted to make it, like the family felt really. You know, real and genuine, and, and that kind of warmth. I think it's a it's a it's a key thing in all of our shows that we create is a humor and heart. And if we can get that into every show, we're 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 very happy. You know, um, and this is just another genius scientist experiment. I put the theory of elasticity to the test. Everything okay, Roy? Yeah. Oh, come on, you two. I mean, Nanny can pull harder than that. Oh yeah. Oh, oh dear. So that's an example of the physicality, and you can really get a lot of comedy from Roy's physicality, a cartoon in the real world. It's, it's you know, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's rife with um, comedy, hopefully. Um, and then, so yeah, as I said, this was BBC kind of developed it, we developed it with BBC, and this is kind of a, just a kind of a clip of the last couple of seasons. Now, just to uh, warn you, we're not a, <laughs> we're not the most traditional looking family <laughs> unit. And I'm sick of you.
Beauty, Mac. It's Roy Zilla. Roy! And up, and here, and there. So, um, that's the show that we've got, and it, it, we were lucky enough to, to win a couple of awards for a BAFTA and NIFTA and Just for Kids and RTS Awards, so we were delighted with that. Um, so that, that, was, that was Roy, and you see, actually we've, we're four seasons in um, of 30 and a half hours, so 52 and a half hours, and we're now making a show kind of a... Um, to extend the brand, Roy, we're making a show uh, about, you know, kind of, like, thematically, we're grouping episodes together, and, you know, um, well, the best way of saying it is, we're making a clip show. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> clips. The best clips for Roy, kind of thing. We're doing that for the BBC at the minute. But we're also doing this little fella here. So, the evolution of Roy. This is a five-year-old version of Roy. And... So it worked really well for BBC and for RTE and um, it, it, all the Scandinavian countries and Australia have it as well and it's doing really well. Um, but we actually it was another it was, it was another BBC exec who came over to visit us one one time recently, um, and she suggested over lunch she said, "Do you think of making a, a younger role, you know, for preschool preschool version for CBBS?" And we're like, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually went. We, actually, it was B, uh, Sarah Harkins from BBC Scotland, and she kind of encouraged us to do it, and, and we actually developed it with them, and much the same as the process I showed you earlier, the show Bible. Uh, we did. It wasn't quite as long a uh, process because we so we had the whole world made up and. Uh, created at that point, but basically it's the same family, family dynamics, uh, mum and dad, and Becky and Roy, but they're just five years younger, so we'll have to do some kind of makeup job on uh, Simon Delaney and Cathy Belton, <laughs> but, uh, so it should be a bit of fun, but basically, so we're, we're, we're actually in production, well, pre-production on that, we're, we're scripting on it now, and um, we've just got Lena, is Lena here? Yeah. Yeah. We just got 30 episodes approved by the BBC recently. Well done, Lena. So, uh, in terms of scripting. So, um, but yeah, so it's the same thing, same, same concept, but it, like, to, like there's, a, there's a world of difference between an 11 year old and a five year old, as you know, in, in terms of like, just that self-awareness. The, there's, a, there's a real self-awareness at 11 that you would not have as a five year old. So, so Roy is totally uninhibited and he has no, you know, he, he doesn't care what people think of him. Whereas the 11 year old did, and he wanted to fit in. This guy is just a force of nature, and he just wants to just have the crack. And that's, that's the difference. So, um, I'll get, so yeah, um, I think Jason touched on it earlier as well. That we, what we tend to do with a lot of our shows is we bring it to Cartoon Forum. And it's, it's a big kind of forum, funny enough. In, um, uh, the last few years it's been in Toulouse and it's kind of it's held in September and it's where producers go to pitch their shows to a massive room, not similar to this, but um, full of broadcasters and distributors and kind of key people uh, in the industry. So we brought this um, last year to Cartoon Forum and just to give you the back because I, we, we obviously tailor, we tailor the pitches to this to do a big room of broadcasters, so so I'll explain a little bit more about that later. But basically, this is the pitch that we kind of gave, or, or an example of, of, of what we, we actually know that's not true. <laughs> this is this is little one, yeah. So so usually you have you have a hook with your show, like you kind of go, what is the if you boil down a show into one sentence, what is it? And the sentence is self discovery through imagination to play. It's Roy, wonder or Roy, Roy is he wonder when Roy is kind of, as I say, he's, he's a five-year-old, and when five-year-olds are playing, 
they get totally immersed and lost in their own imagination. So if you imagine that you have a little dinky car or something like that, if a kid is playing with a five-year-old kid is playing with a car, like that, you know, he's, he's actually imagining himself, I think, <laughs> imagining himself inside a car, a Formula One car or whatever, and, you know, it's just that whole, the, the, how imagination is so prominent at that age. So we, we, we thought that that would be a great way for to distinguish Little Roy from Big Roy because we don't want to copy I know it's milking an idea but we, we don't want to copy ourselves so, so we want to make something new and fresh so um, this is just a little bit of, about Little Roy and obviously he, he feels and thinks the same way as any other kid but he's a cartoon so this is kind of this is a, an example of, of what might happen in an episode so we kind of pan up to a very pink Room, it's called Breakfast in Bed. And pink bed, we see Becky in bed fast asleep. Then we see the cartoon Z's from the other side of the room. And the other side of the room, they, they share a room, and Roy is obviously a boy, so it's much different. So it's one of my problems with it. Before, but how hard can it be? Phew, but that was close. Shh, be very quiet. Nice and easy. Uh oh, creaky door. Phew. Come on, follow me. So it's basically just a, a younger sweeter, cuter version of Roy. Um, but he goes on in that episode to make this, he, he tries to make breakfast in bed for the family. It's a Saturday morning and, and he gets up really early and he tries to make breakfast for everybody. But he, he kind of, being a cartoon, makes a, a bags of it. And, and he, he makes a, a massive mess in the kitchen. And afterwards, um, um, the, the mum and dad give out to him and it's, it's kind of like, it's more about, the, you know, I suppose it's uh, about the consequences like, of, of, of your actions. So that, it's that particular show. But, um, as I said, we, we tried to make it quite different to, to Roy in that because he's a five-year-old uh, five version of himself, he, his imagination plays such a, a prominent uh, role in his life, you know? So we, we created this, this kind of character that was a, a like it's going to be kind of like an online phenomenon or a, 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 a general kind of like almost like X Men or Batman or something like that. So five year old kids are, <coughs> gen five year old boys are, are generally mad into that kind of stuff. So we created this character Wonder Boy that he's totally obsessed by, and so it, it kind of gave us this opportunity to when he goes into his imagination he becomes Wonder Roy, and um, so he thinks he's Wonder Boy, and it's a safe place for him to explore. Um, and, and resolve problems that he has in his real life. So he has an issue, whatever it is, during, during the show, in the, the, the live action part of the show. He, you know, he, he resolves it through imagination, he goes into his imagination at a crisis point, kind of takes two minutes out, and we see a fully animated two minute sequence of him um, kind of battling, battling soft villains, uh, which are kind of the, the magnifications of what happens in the real world, in that sense. <laughs> but uh, you can see now. This actually, this is um, so when, when he goes into his imagination, it's wonder right. That's this is uh, Finn. He has a goldfish now, which we're redeveloping it all the time. But we have this uh, goldfish character. Um, in real life, he has a little goldfish bowl and is a little a little fish that's his pet, and it's called Finn. And in his imagination, Finn comes to life, and he's this sidekick as to his super person. You know, it's wonder right. This is the messer, which kind of, every kid gets messy at some point, you know, so he's kind of like, uh, yeah, he just creates havoc around himself. This is Dr. Green's when, when Roy doesn't want to eat his vegetables, he appears. Uh, this is the neg um, negatron, which is kind of like the negative thoughts in, in, in all kids' heads, when, in, in everybody's head, I suppose. This, is, this represents the neighbor, um, 
Mr. Parker and it's kind of like he's like he's barking orders at, at Roy and this is uh, nighty night who whenever Roy wants to go to sleep like he, like he, kids don't want to go to bed so that's kind of the thing there and this represents his sister Becky who's all the pink prim- princess and she's got glitter gli- glitter gum she for his kind of glitter pink glitter all over the place so it's kind of magnifications of what happens in his real life goes into his imagination and they become these soft villains. So I'll just give you a, a taste of what that might look like. The character that we have in this one is actually, we redeveloped it, but you get a sense of the world and, and it looks quite different. Um, so I'll just give you a look at that. And this is him kind of getting into that, if you imagine, from live action into his imagination. Hmm, what would Wonder Boy do? What's that, Sparky? <laughs> Dr. Danger is attacking Tidy Town? <laughs> ha ha ha! Not on my watch, Dr. Danger. To Tidy Town! <laughs> Let's clean up this mess, Sparky! <laughs> You're too late, Wonder Roy. My army of foot soldiers, the Buddha Bing Bots, will turn Tidy Town into Untidy Town in no time. <laughs> get it? You're the one who's gonna get it, Dr. Danger. So that's uh, that, that's kind of how Wonder Roy will play, play out, and that's what it'll look like. But uh, kind of, I suppose it, it's very different from his real life, and um, kind of get to escape into his imagination. He, he finds a way of resolving whatever issue it is in, in, his, in the real world and then comes out and applies that in the real world. And that's kind of the resolution of the story. Um, so, as I said, we, we kind of pitched this in Cartoon Forum and it's a big room of broadcasters and distributors and it's quite nerve wracking and you, you pitch your show and you hope people like it and they do, great, you might, you might sell it. So, uh, thankfully, a few people like this, which is good. Um, but this was kind of, at, at the time, there was the Ice Bucket Challenge craze going around, so um, we shot this um, as, as a way of kind of bringing the, the broadcasters in, 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 in terms of like, kind of uh, nominating them to do an Ice Bucket Challenge through Roy. So all the names that are mentioned are prominent broadcasters from around Europe, so, <laughs> so which was handy. So. Here's kind of what we did, so, so I think it kind of worked in a way. I'd like to thank Becky for the nomination to do the Ice Bucket Challenge. So here goes. <laughs> <gasps> That's freezing! I'd like to n- nominate Jackie Edwards, Pauline Ma- <laughs> Namara, Sebastian <laughs> Devertine, Lawrence Blove, Karen M- Miller, Rock Lanner, Claire Heinrich, Sarah M- Muller, Beth Gardner, Vicky Soder, Grania Mara. Stop laughing at me! Thanks for coming to the Little Roy presentation. <laughs> so basically, that that that's uh, yeah. So that, that worked. I think it worked quite well. We've got it made anyway. Which is so must be so, something working right. Um, and now I'm going to actually pass it on to the real genius behind it all, uh, Niall Mooney, who's uh, the head of visual effects, and we we've a studio up in uh, in Belfast, and it's where all that kind of the magic happens, and where. I suppose where the show becomes real and believable, because um, Noel and, and the team up there kind of just marry the animation with the, the live action. Um, so I'll just pass you on to Noel now. For a second. Thank you very much. Um, as Al said, I'm uh, my job in Jam is visual effects supervisor on Roy. I've actually been working there about 10 years and I was an animator on the original short that we did. So going back to that, we kind of started off, we didn't, kind of, <coughs> didn't use computers that much at the time, so we had to draw everything on paper. We had to print out all the stills of the footage that we shot. 
line them all up perfectly and draw it. But since we started on the on the TV show, we, we use a lot of software which helps make the job easier. The show itself, we're in our fourth season. Um, every show, every season, we try to make it better. Like I was talking about milk and idea, the one thing that we do in Jam with Roy is even though, like, as, as you all know, a lot of sequels are always terrible or not as good as the originals, we always try and make Roy better, better, better. Every, every season we try and push the, the stories, the animation, the visual effects. So that's one thing that I think has helped keep the show so popular. Um, what my job is, there's a couple of parts to my job. On set, I'm always there with Al, or else our other supervisor, Dan Cantwell, is here, where we sit with Al, and as he's kind of looking at the shots as they're being filmed, making sure the, the actors are kind of, he's getting the performances out of the actors that he wants, we're looking at all the technical side of it. So we're looking at the timing of Roy's supposed to run into a shot, that the actors react properly, and um, we, we do a lot of on-set kind of reactions, so if he runs in or out, there's actually a guy off camera with like a leaf blower that kind of just whizzes it through the shot to get their hair to blow, little subtle things like that, just to really bring the, the scenes to life. So while Al is concentrating on that, we're, we're watching that if, if somebody walks in front of Roy, one of the things that we try and kind of do with Roy is he has to be believable. The, the, the whole point of it is that when the kids watch the show, that they believe he's a real character and they never for one second uh, question that. So that's uh, the quality of the show, the quality of the tracking, the, the rotoscoping just has to be, we almost treat them like little feature films. The quality just has to be so perfect or else the whole illusion is lost as regards Roy being in the footage. So we, we have to watch for everything from, yeah, if Roy's behind a desk or a table, just the level of complexity that the shots are kind of gonna cause us further down the line. Because if we present our compositing team with all this footage that they, that's just a nightmare to use, like the turnaround on the show is pretty intense. We have like a year, the last, we made two seasons in one go and we had 12 months to make 26 episodes. So kind of, it averages out like every, one every two weeks, which is kind of so intense for, for the level of work that goes into the show. So we're always kind of, we have to be conscious of the amount of uh, interaction, reaction, and effects, but it still has to be there with the stories to, to kind of just to make the show what it is. So I'll just quickly give you a look at a, a visual effects breakdown of some of the shots and how we make them. We, we, one of the things we've always done, and the BBC uh, were kind of on board in that, like what I was saying earlier, the kids, we want them to believe Roy is real. So we've never really shown how we make it. A lot of kids at these kind of <coughs> questions and answers kind of ask is how we do it and we don't actually like to tell them because it, that whole illusion is lost but uh, because it's dingle animation we're going to show you a little a little sneak clip of, uh, of some of our visual effects shots and how we put them together
see you tomorrow. <laughs> So as you can see, we, we have to do a lot of kind of trickery and, and that on set. We actually have to shoot everything twice. You, you can see in some of the, the clips there, we actually do have an actor that plays Roy. And we have to kind of block out the scenes, uh, get all the timings right with the actors. So they kind of in their heads know what's happening and where they're supposed to be looking. And then once we have all that planned, we actually take uh, Robert, who plays Roy, out of the shot. And then we have to sh shoot the whole thing again with a blank plate so that we can then just insert Roy um, more easily th than having to kind of remove Robert painted out because his limbs and his height, everything is slightly different to Roy's. So we have to make two versions and for the BBC as well, just for them to sign off on an on a episode, they need to as well kind of know, even though we know in our heads what's supposed to be happening, they need to also see that because we only do the animation and compositing after the, the picture lock. So, and then also it's really handy for our animators to use as a guide for where Roy is supposed to be and what he's doing. Um, so I'll just take you through a quick uh, shot. In one of our, epi our episodes this season, Roy, uh, a science experiment went wrong and he uh, turned 50 foot. It's called Attack of the 50 Foot Roy. That was a particularly difficult episode to shoot because of just the scale of him. We had to shoot a lot wider in some of the shots trying to tell the actors exactly where they were supposed to be looking because we didn't have a big stick with a ball on the top that was 50 foot tall and um, stuff like that so it was it was quite a challenging episode and um, this particular scene and uh, Roy is chasing the bullies through the park and he picks up death of the bully kind of to, to get him back from something that happened earlier picks him right up so he's kind of dangling up at Roy's eye level which is 50 foot in the air so we had to shoot Keen in the studio on the green screen first um, to get him and his performance and so we'd shoot Keen then we'd obviously uh, we do all, most of our uh, compositing work we actually do in After Effects and the animation is done in, in Flash so in After Effects we'll uh, key out the, the green screen we'll remove any wires anything else that, that doesn't need to be in the shot um, so then this is a still from the, the blank plate that we use we kind of shot the sequence close to a tree so we'd have some reference of where uh, the, so the DOP would know where to kind of point the camera and then that the actors would, would look. Um, so we roughly kind of place him in for a guide. The, the posers, which are essentially storyboarders, will then use that footage. We, uh, we just bring all the footage into our Cintiqs. We can draw right onto the, onto the footage now on the Cintiq screens, which is a big help. And they literally just roughly pose out where Roy should be for the, for the animators. Then the animation is kind of done in Adobe Flash. Um, they'll do all the animation, the lip sync, the performance from Roy's to get that right. And then our compositors will go in and start to do the final tweaks to just to get everything to match up. So they place kind of death go right in, into, into Roy's fingers here. Then we also texture and light Roy. Every, every shot that we have to put Roy into, we have to look at like the lighting in the shot and um, where the light's coming from so that we can then match that to Roy so we know where to to kind of highlight his colours, where the, his shadow should be, stuff like that. Um, we just added a subtle shadow then to, uh, to Deco, or onto Roy from Deco, and then there's all these just little subtle things. We, uh, you know, the, the trees are being kind of burnt out in the background, so we add slight little uh, light burns into Roy just to get that, uh, just to make it feel like it all sits together. And then in this particular shot, it actually started off on the ground. We had to get Roy to pick Deco up, and the camera follows with him. So we had to basically time it so that when the camera started to pan up, Deco kind of jumped into the air, and then we took over with the, with the animation and compositing. And then when he puts him back down, we'd give Deco a cue. He'd jump back up into the air and throw himself on the ground as if Roy was, was putting him down, and then we matched them all together. Oh, 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 I'll ask you again nicely. Please put me down. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now buzz off before I use you to clean the wax out of my ears. We actually do, we have, a, we have a, a rig that's built in in After Effects, a special rig that we kind of have developed through the four seasons. And basically his paper texture and his pencil scratchy line is, is just a kind of a program that we use and we can adjust that, um, the size of the shot, how big he is in shot, so that it's more scratchy, less scratchy. 
you know, because yeah, the, the idea is that it's just yeah, no, it's it's all animated, yeah, it's and we can control that, yeah, it boils because when we did the original short, we basically had to draw everything three times to get it all to boil, but it's just too time consuming now um, with the with the kind of schedules. So yeah, we we can just control everything from the the thickness of the line, the amount of scratchiness, the colour of it, and how it reacts with with Roy, yeah. So it's. Yeah. And the, the flash animation is kind of a mix of frame by frame and kids. <coughs> and which? And kids, like puppets are all frame um, Yeah, well, because we've been kind of doing it for four seasons, then we have the kind of libraries of symbols that we use. Yeah. But um, a lot of it, when it gets really cartoony, it all has to kind of be bespoke for the scenes. But yeah, there is a library of mouths, eyes, hands, stuff like that. And what frame rate do you animate in the live action? Uh, we do 25, yeah. 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 What well, he said. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we concur. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, we have, we have to do it like that because of the live action footage yeah. that we have to. Yeah. So he's not in ones or anything. Just no, no. no. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we just when it's called for, we yeah. do have to do it. Yeah. We kind of have to. Every. I suppose he's not animated on ones, but um, yeah, we have to kind of because it's live action. You have to kind of crop and mask on ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other questions? No? Yeah, problems with the panning with the cameras. <laughs> what? Like moving around like that. It's, it's the biggest challenge yeah, of Roy. It's, it's, it's what makes it so special with the, the, the whole documentary feel of it. But it's actually the biggest problem we have trying to track it. Because it just takes so much. Like, like I was talking about, if, if the illusion is lost, the whole sh show is just, yeah, there's no point doing it. So it literally has to be frame by frame. Sometimes we have to because of the amount of motion blur with some of the shots um, and we literally use everything we'll use after effects We use mocha we use uh, match mover um, we use the point trackers and after effects and then sometimes yeah by eye There's no other way to do it, you know Little, little Roy's gonna be more static Yeah, you're lots of locked cameras Yeah, that's the other question. Little Roy, for like preschool, it still seems like How do you mean, like the from? Or two, you know, just a, yeah, no, we we we, we kind of we worked with the beam on that, and they kind of they were okay with it once the villains are very soft and yeah. like it will be more dynamic than the show, and hopefully it lets you speed the pace of the show up a little when we go into the Wonder Boy section. But uh, um, yeah, we were conscious of not making it too scary for preschoolers, so it's that's all very soft and reflective of what's happening in his real life. Yeah, you know? but um. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks very much. Helen Hobbs, happy days. Yeah, no, thanks, Tom. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it turns out that good. <laughs> um, any other questions? Because I just thought it would be a good opportunity now just to give you a little sneak peek at our next production that we're doing. And along. It's only like one image, so don't get excited. But basically, <laughs> <laughs> it's not moving. It's not moving. It's basically, you know, uh, as we spoke earlier on about the art of milk and an idea. So, in line with that, our next project is going to be called Embryo. <laughs> 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 <laughs>